Let's get into this. This week, the name on the marquee has got to be Corey the Sandman Sanhagen, who this past weekend at UFC Fight Night at the UFC Apex in Las Vegas, Nevada, defeated Song Yedong by TKO at the end of round number four. Boy, it was a night of cuts. This one may be the nastiest one. It's arguable. I'm sure we'll get into it during this this episode. Mark, let me send it over to you first. What would your take, not just of the cut, that end of the fight, but of Corey Sanhagen's performance overall? Yeah, this was a great main event. It was a nice showcase for just how good each of these guys are and how good the Bantamweight division is as a whole. Uh, and it was just what Corey needed. Like, he put on the type of performance that put him right back at the top of everyone's minds as a guy who could be a champion in this division. It was absolutely what he needed to do in order to bounce back from the couple tough losses that he has had. Um, It played out more or less how I imagined. The cardio for Song held up. But other than that, Corey did start to figure him out as the rounds went on. Song's explosion was a bit less of a factor as the rounds went on. Corey's variety of attack really started to pay dividends. So kind of went how I imagined it would. Um, But as you said, as much as Corey was winning the rounds, the fight really centered around this cut over Song Song Yudong's eye. It was a nasty cut. Um, Night of nasty cuts, as you said. I I don't know which one was worse. I kind of think the other one might have even been fucking worse than this one. We'll get to that. But this was a crazy cut over Song's eye. As soon as you saw it, right away you knew we were going to be watching that cut all fight long. Wondering if they were going to stop him, wondering how long they'd let him go, wondering if Corey could make it worse. And Corey was absolutely aiming for it. He knew exactly what was going on in there. Um, so, you know, you're wondering when it's going to get stopped, and, and finally it does. And it was a fair stoppage uh, for sure. It had gotten worse. You know, Corey kept hitting it. It, it was going more uh, across the brow, which was making the doctor nervous. Um, and rightfully so. It was a fair stoppage. Corey earned that W for sure, and he really came in there with a great strategy. I loved how he came in looking a level change because, and he kind of touched on this post-fight, but I loved him using that level change and and shooting the occasional takedown even if he wasn't truly going for it because it kind of stripped Song of the ability to to plant his feet and and sit back on big power punches, and it worked like a charm um, Mm -hmm. because Corey kept him guessing with that. That, that threat of the takedown was, was constantly in Song's mind, and just because of that, it let Corey get into that range more easily than he would have otherwise because Song had to kind of take the back steps every now and then because of the threat of that takedown. So Corey was able to get into the range. It let him land cleaner. It, it was really a perfect way to fight Song and um, nearly a perfect fight, I, I would say, for Corey Sandhagen and a, a huge bounce-back W. Omar, let's bring you in here. What was your impressions of Corey Sandhagen's kind of a stamp performance in the Bantamweight division. Well, considering I didn't pick Sanhagen to win this, I don't think, uh, it was definitely a you-must-have-forgot performance. Um, you know, his his recent performances have been against some of the top guys. Um, and I think I had a lot of confidence in Yudong to, to, to be able to kind of rise to the occasion. But Corey did exactly what Corey does, man. He uses movement. He's a very, very uh, skilled fighter when it comes to his movement and his range of movement. Um, he does a lot of lateral movement throughout those fights, definitely keeping Song Yudong guessing as to where he's going to be, making them very difficult to catch. Um, and those step in elbows were disgusting. They were absolutely disgusting. Um, not enough guys use that. I think a lot of guys should be using that, especially when they crash. Like we see a lot of guys almost colliding heads sometimes when they're trying to kind of attack each other. If, if, Every once in a while, these guys would come in, you know, with an elbow forward or an elbow across their own face and, and crash in that way. We would see a lot more of these these cuts, a lot more damage done, you know, on one side as opposed to some accidental headbutt or something like that. But um, regardless, it was a fantastic performance from uh, from the Sandman. I, I, I feel bad for, for Yudong because he couldn't see out of that eye at once it was cut, apparently. It got very difficult for him to see, I can only imagine. And so it does take away, but not take away from the win. That's that's not really where I want to go with that. But I would still want to see what Yudong could do had that not happened to his eye, I guess. Right? Maybe it goes the same exact way. That's fine. But um, I guess I was still left with a little bit of, of curiosity as to how that would still go had the injury not 
affected his performance as much as it did. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, right after the fight, Mark, Corey Sanhagen called out, I believe, Cheeto Vero. And Cheeto said, if you want it, come get it. Do you think, though, that there's a better name out there in the Bantamweight division for Corey Sanhagen's next opponent? Yeah, so he threw out um, a few things. He he threw out, um, I want to say he, he mentioned the Yano O'Malley fight as well, but he then he oh. mentioned specifically by name Cheeto and Marab. So... Yeah. That's kind of where I'm at. I almost feel like it doesn't even make sense to try to match make Corey Sandhagen right now because hmm. you have uh, Aljo and TJ coming up on the horizon here, and on that same card you have Jan and O'Malley. And I almost feel like you got to let this division play out before you know what you're going to do with it. Like, Sandhagen has already fought Aljo. He's already fought TJ. He's already fought Jan. So I feel like you got to see who yeah. wins and loses these fights. you got to see who's going to get that title shot. Is it going to be Cheeto right away? Is it going to be something else maybe O'Malley gets a crazy night who, like who we really have no idea who's even getting the next title shot right now or who's going to be the champion for that matter so I feel like you kind of got to let those two fights play themselves out see what the landscape looks like after that and then try to pick up the pieces and, and match these guys up in a way that makes sense but you got seven killers sitting at the top of of yeah, Bantamweight right now I would have said eight but we'll yeah. get to the oh, sad story of my that. man Jose calling it yeah. quits which I don't understand <laughs> but you can even still say it if you want to throw Dom in this mix still, but him aside, you got you got seven guys looking great up there at the top right now. Omar, what about you? Would you be excited to see Sanhagen versus Vera or any other names? I, I got to be honest. I like the Vera call out. I love the Marab call out. The Marab call out is very interesting. Um, if I had to choose between the two of them stylistically, I think the Marab one is just more interesting overall. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. I love my man Cheeto. I'm, I would I be down for that fight. Don't don't get me wrong, um, but but just stylistically, it just seems like a more interesting fight. Um, I agree. I'm super intrigued by Sandhagen and yeah. So I, I would definitely be down for either one. From a timing perspective, I think it also it, it may not be a bad thing, right? If Corey didn't really injure himself and he's good to go after that last fight, he wants to make a quick turnaround before the end of the year. I mean, I doubt Aljamain and, you know, any of the winners from the next three fights that are going to happen in the next month, I doubt any one of them are going to have a quick turnaround and go back in, you know, before December. Um, so if Corey thinks he can do it, Marlon wants to do it, or Marab wants to do it, let him do it if it's before the end of the year. If it's after that, yeah. at that point, just wait until, you know, we see what happens and then just kind of go from there. But if you're going to schedule something, I would do just do it now. I could see both of those. I could see that matchup coming together because both of those guys are the types of fighters that don't duck anybody. Marlon Vera very much is anybody, anytime, and Corey Sanhagen wants to test himself against the very best. And I could absolutely yeah. see them, you know, squaring I, off later this year. I almost feel like that's the only one you can book right now if you're going to book something that happens in 2022, because like I can't imagine them booking Cheeto in something. Because wouldn't he be like, well, wait a second. Like, if Jan beats O'Malley, aren't I fighting for the title? Because who the hell else would? Like, I, I doubt it's Jan already, right? So I don't see him taking a fight. Obviously, these other guys all still have to fight a month from now. So the only two guys that you really could try to book before the year's over are, are Sanhagen and Marab. Although when you mention the possibility of Sanhagen against O'Malley, I am very intrigued by that, that is from crazy. O'Malley's standpoint. What a test for Sean O'Malley, that would be. Yeah. I mean, I'm hey, more, he's fucking I, fighting Piotr Jan first. That's yeah. That's kind of where I'm at. Is like, let's see how he does against right Piotr Jan first. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he yeah, might be getting turned back in that one. We will see. Yeah, man. O O'Malley is really, he's stepping up into the shark tank of the top of 135 pounds now. So He needs to look the best he's ever <clears> looked. <throat> like, a lot of that gamesmanship that he puts on, it, you know, it very well might not work against against Piotr and so yeah I don't know remains to be seen who knows <laughs> all right anything else you guys want to say about this main event before we move on I'll match up song real quick oh yeah my bad I got one that I love I love every single thing about this matchup I want song and dong and Ricky Simone Ooh. Ricky Simone has been looking like a fucking animal my man is long overdue for a big shot against someone. This satisfies that. I think 
Simone does what I would love to see Song tested against with, with someone that strong in the wrestling department. I think Song's athleticism and power is something I'd love to see Simone tested against. I, I think that matchup checks every box for me. Good job, Mark. Omar, any yeah. names? Yeah. No, I, I would definitely <laughs> second that. I would definitely second that. Because, uh, I mean, otherwise, the only other names that you kind of that, that would really make sense, because even though Yo, Yudong lost, he lost to his hop contender. Um, and I don't really think he should go far back as a result of that. I, I doubt he would have lost really any traction, um, you know, or as much traction as a result of this past fight than, than other people have. Um, but you have people like Dominic Cruz right around his radar, which I wouldn't hate, but I'm not as intrigued in there as I am for the Ricky Simone fight. They're both just so decently well-rounded. The only thing is I think Ricky Simone's wrestling is probably better than, uh, than Yudong's is, but Yudong trains with, a lot of wrestlers, a lot of good wrestlers in alpha male and team alpha male. So it, it makes for, for an intriguing question of matchup. Yeah. It's yeah. kind of like song has sneaky wrestling. Is it good enough for Simone? Simone has sneaky striking. Is it good enough for song? Like it's kind of yeah. like they're yeah. almost the flip of each other. Yeah, man. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Let's move on. Congrats to Corey Sanhagen for making it onto the marquee this week. Okay, okay, down. I'm allergic to something. My eyes are fucking going crazy over here. Oh. Anyway, continue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that. 